Young lady, just get in the game a little bit, yes? yes? Today, I'm talking about someone with a track record of the worst consistency among all winners, totaling up to 25 mistakes that impacted service quality. Ugh, this sucks. I hate going through this right now. I am talking about All-Stars winner Michelle Tribble, who's set to be the sous chef for the Red Team in the upcoming season, following Christina Wilson's alleged firing from Chef Ramsay's restaurants. So, bring it on. <laughs> this is my game phase. I am ready. She whipped up a dish of seared scallops over polenta and gnocchi. Chef Ramsay thought it tasted fantastic and didn't hold back on praising her. Wow, they taste beautiful. Thank you. It's four out of five. Thank you. In the bar menu challenge, she went all out with a lobster sausage, fully aware that she was teetering on the edge of ambitious. But hey, this is Hell's Kitchen, so it's either you shoot for the stars or pack your knives. She was the last one called up from the red team's top four, bringing forward her lobster and shrimp sausage roll paired with an Asian slaw. You know, when you see a lobster roll and it's been steeped in butter and put together roughly, it's unappetizing, but they look beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Chef Ramsay couldn't help but point out how great the dish looked, and clearly impressed, he slid her creation into the top four. Despite all that, she ended up losing the challenge to Millie, whose dish was evidently the best. But this has to be the most elegant pot of poutine anywhere on the planet. <laughs> but later, things took a nosedive when she sent up a risotto that Chef Ramsay found absolutely soaked in garlic. All of you, grab a spoon! And to make matters worse, the rice wasn't even fully cooked. Garlic first, raw rice. It was a rough moment, but she pulled it together and managed to get the refire accepted. And no Chef Ramsay still couldn't resist asking her what went wrong with the first one. She promised him it was just a one-time slip-up. but why was it like that first off? Why can't you do that first time round? Uh, it'll be like that from now on out. In the wood plank cooking challenge, Michelle was teamed up with Jennifer, and they were the first pair from the red team to have their dish judged, going up against Nick and Robin. They put together a black cod with Mediterranean spices and some charcoal eggplant on the side. The fish got a nod for being seasoned really well, but Ben Ford thought they overdid it with the vinaigrette. Probably would help back a little on the vinaigrette on the eggplant, let those natural flavors, that smoky flavor, come out a little bit more. Unsurprisingly, they lost the round to Nick and Robin. Jeff. I think I'm gonna have to give a point to the blue team. Damn. Team gay. Team gay. Team gay. The red team ended up losing the entire challenge after tying it at three, which meant their reward was a trip to Apex Ranch, only to clean up a stable. Definitely not the victory they were hoping for. In the Pizza Fusion Challenge, Michelle chose to go up against Benjamin because she figured if she was going to compete, she might as well take on the best. They ended up with France as their theme. And then Michelle wasn't too worried, though. She mentioned being happy about landing France since, in her mind, it wasn't exactly hard to pair up French flavors with pizza. Nah, nah. She was the last one from the red team to get her dish judged, but in a twist, ended up facing Giovanni instead of Benjamin. Michelle presented her pizza topped with brie, Brussels sprouts, and toasted prosciutto. I'm gonna give it to the blue team and Robin. Yeah. Yeah. While she got a bit of heat for not fully utilizing the pizza dough, the judges still thought she did a good job overall, and she edged out Giovanni in that round. <laughs> the red team took the win with a 3-2 score, and their reward was a tour of Hollywood on a double-decker bus, followed by a visit to the Hollywood Magic Castle, definitely a better prize than scrubbing stables. It was the Italian night dinner service. Michelle was assigned to the meat station, while Manda was in charge of preparing the pasta dishes. I need somebody to taste that pasta for me. I'm on hot apps tonight. I am going to be slinging out some pasta. For those of you who didn't know. All spaghetti. I have celiac disease, so I am not supposed to have anything with flour in it whatsoever. It makes me so incredibly sick. So she asked Michelle for her opinion. Michelle, seemingly supportive, tasted Manda's pasta and said, that for me. Is that done? Mm. 30 more seconds. Okay. Even though I can't really taste it, I am not letting celiac disease take me down. However, unknown to Manda, Michelle had ulterior motives. Chef Ramsay tasted it, and well, what do you know? The first batch of pasta returned to the kitchen, undercooked. It looks like a lot, Chef. It's no, just taste raw. it. Just taste it. Raw. It's crunchy as <laughs> Manda was puzzled because she trusted Michelle's judgment. Michelle, on the other hand, despite her outward approval, slyly insinuated. I wasn't sure, Chef. I can tell when pasta's done just by looking at it, so Manda should be able to do it too. Well, then were you blind while checking Manda's dish? The latter made a second attempt hoping it would meet the high standards of the Italian night service. Again, she sought Michelle's opinion, and this time, Michelle once more claimed the pasta was fine. I need a mouth! Here, Michelle. It's done. Michelle says here it's done. See if that's cooked. 
But thanks to Elise, and trust me, I choked a little while saying those three words, it was revealed that the pasta was still raw. And you wouldn't believe how nonchalant Michelle was about it. See if that's cooked. It's raw. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. My bad. And she was unapologetic about it. Michelle was fooling no one viewers saw right through it. And Manda, too, realized that she was trying to mislead her by giving false assurances. Lobster sausage? I'm definitely pushing the limit of the definition of being ambitious. Michelle put together a pan-seared elk with chickpea puree, but things didn't go her way. The judges called out her elk for being overcooked, never a good sign when you're dealing with game meat. I think the meat was a little bit dry. That's a great shape. Unsurprisingly, she lost that round to the blue team. During dinner service, Michelle was working the meat station with Barbie. And feeling pretty confident after proving herself on meat previously, she sliced the chicken and handed it over to Barbie, claiming it was good since there was no pink inside. You said the chicken was perfect, right? Because I didn't double check you. It wasn't pink on the inside and it had some shine, so... There was no pink on the inside. There was no pink on the inside. But Chef Ramsay quickly put her in her place, showing the red team that the chicken was still raw. What is happening? It's Oh. To rub a little salt in the wound, Elise didn't miss the chance to mock Michelle for failing to notice the obvious mistake. I did, Chef. Wow, doesn't surprise me, but hey, she's the best chef here. Unsurprisingly, the red team lost the service, and Chef Ramsay asked them to nominate two people for elimination. During deliberation, things got tense. Michelle, trying to take charge, shut down the team's argument mid-bicker. She then called out Manda for missing the pork order earlier in the service, clearly shifting some of the blame. Barbie wasn't having it and accused Michelle of being all over the place. Everywhere else. You bounced through the whole kitchen. That doesn't mean anything. There was a lot going on. That has nothing to do with how you cook duck, though. Simim, Michelle defended herself, saying she wasn't about to take over Barbie's work and disrespect her, but Elise didn't let that slide. She pointed out that Michelle had seriously dropped the ball with the raw chicken, and Michelle had to own up to that one. If you're her partner, why were you letting her send I, up raw duck? I'm not gonna snatch meat out of Barbie's hand and cook it. Still, Michelle argued she'd been trying to help both the fish and meat stations that night, spreading herself thin. Elise, however, kept accusing her of coasting through the service. I was back and forth on fish and... You <laughs> skated through that I like did that. not! You like this I did not skate, skate Elise. You skated through service tonight. No, 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 no. You skated through Elise. service tonight. Michelle's attempt to defend herself didn't really land, especially when Elise started dismissing her comments. I Running know. around like a chicken Elise. with your head cut off? No. That's what you're great at. Elise, you ask me what I did on mine. It's only that's fair. I did doing. I ask? Okay, Elise was a bully. No surprise there. During the charity night dinner service, Michelle took charge of the pan-seared scallop course. She had instructed her team to cook all the scallops required, but when it came time to plate, she found herself short by three scallops. Three more pieces of scallops. Who that up? I don't know, Chef. You don't know. The situation left everyone scratching their heads since they were supposed to cook 10 each. Elise pointed fingers, accusing Michelle of failing to count properly. Did everybody have 10 in their pan? I had yes. 10 yes, in yes, I had 10. Michelle, did you forget how to count? I don't see how that happened when you weren't, I don't know, doing anything else. Now, despite this mix-up, Michelle managed to get her course out first, thinking it was a decent start even if it was missing a few scallops. During Elise's course, Chef Ramsay noticed she was preparing the bear blanc sauce without any heat. I, I turn the gas on. Oh my god. Said no colors. As then Michelle couldn't keep up pace with the blue team. Team is nearly ready. Where's the sauce, Michelle? Chef, it's reducing right here on the stove. It's reducing now. As for Barbie's course, she asked Michelle to prep the onions, but the latter had already promised Dana she would help with dessert prep, so she asked Barbie to let Elise help with the garnish. See your garnish? The dessert doesn't go out until after my course. Yes, but you ha we have to make them during your course so they're ready to go in the oven. Is that okay? You already told me that you would, though. I know, but I, what I do you have Elise do it? I have Elise doing twat. Michelle tried to juggle both tasks because she also made a commitment to Barbie for garnishes, but Chef Ramsay was less than pleased when he found the potatoes burnt, calling it a mess. I need my asparagus, please. All right, give me 10 seconds. A minute later, when Chef Ramsay and Barbie were pushing her for garnish, Michelle was deliberately slow and tried diverting. See Miss Coke, please. I need that spinach, please. Worry about your beef. How about I get that spinach, Michelle? In summary, Michelle didn't have enough scallops set out on the trays, causing them to be three scallops short, wasn't doing anything on her course, cooked shrimp with no heat, slow on the sauce, bland sauce, refused to do anything on Barbie's course, dragged on spinach, refused to give a time, slow on beef. 
I have to say, till now, I have not seen any standout moment of Michelle, and she certainly was no leader. Viewers are also of the opinion that she was as and bagging her team. One of them wrote, She always seemed to mess up whenever a teammate was leading the line, doing sous chef duties, or just helping in general. She messed up for Manda slash Barbie slash Elise slash Nick everybody. Then, when it was her time to do something, she did it perfect. It happened every time she needed to do something in the kitchen for someone else. She was low-key sabotaging everyone. Show this while reading the above comment. Do you agree? In the first Black Jackets challenge, also known as the Taste It Now Make It challenge, Michelle opted to use sea bass along with green and white asparagus, rutabaga, celery root, fava beans, and chives. As Chef Ramsay judged the dishes, Michelle hoped to repeat her success from season 14, even though she was competing solo this time. She nailed the fish protein and the white puree, but fell short when she couldn't identify any of the other ingredients, like green puree correctly, leading her to lose to Millie and Nick. But she won her black jacket after competing in the second round. Then came the holiday challenge, which she lost to Benjamin. Her challenge record, as you must have noticed, is nothing great. During dinner service, she was assigned to the garnish station. Early on, Millie rejected her potatoes guilty. When Michelle didn't follow Millie's orders, Chef Ramsay accused her of trying to jeopardize the former. Either she's not listening, or she's out to sabotage. Michelle, look at me. Are you sabotaging? No, Chef! Michelle defended herself, insisting she was a team player, and eventually, her refires were accepted. She was the third person to run the pass. And let me tell you, although you already know if you watched the episode, it was the worst pass performance amongst the final four. I'm happy with the New York trip. Um, it's a little under, Chef. So, Chef Ramsay decided to swap the New York strip loin for ribeye, but she didn't catch it till provoked. More importantly, yes, what steak is that? Ribeye. No? Yeah. Uh, Michelle really didn't notice the change and sliced the ribeye, mistakenly thinking it was undercooked. Come on, Michelle. Yes, Chef. Oh, I knew that was wrong, too. Well, you sliced it. I don't know. Chef, I'm sorry. Young lady, just get in the game a little bit, yes? yes? Chef. After her turn, she took over the meat station from Nick, but was caught bringing up duck sauce instead of the lamb sauce that was ordered. Lamb sauce, this is duck sauce. Oh, my bad. Oh, Come on, Michelle, seriously? She was also seen struggling to heat up the sauce properly, adding to the list of mishaps during the service. She also admitted, You've only worked with me in two dinner services. Well, you said today was your worst dinner service. Today was my worst dinner service. How you led the pass affects Chef Ramsay's decision a lot. So, I was really confused. She wasn't assertive, made silly mistakes, had no quality control. Anyway, Chef Ramsay announced that Nick and Benjamin were the two finalists. In a surprising twist, Chef Ramsay told Michelle that she had had a phenomenal journey and should be proud of how far she had come. He then revealed that she was the third finalist, making this the first time in the show's history that three chefs would be heading into the finale. Chef Ramsay informed the finalists that for the final menu challenge, they would each need to prepare five dishes a cold appetizer, a hot appetizer, and three entrees. The sous chefs would assist them, but with three finalists this season, Chef Ramsay had enlisted the help of his colleague Keisha to fill the third sous chef spot. And his cranberry hollandaise with scallops blew Chef Ramsay away. Besides, he was the most creative one, undisputedly. So some viewers are of the opinion that since Janelle failed her drug test, that's why the Caesars Palace CEO made the final call this time, despite not being a chef. What? Um, right. Smoked sea salt caramel? Yeah. So, yeah, his elimination was a bad decision. In June 2021, she competed on Chopped, Season 50, Episode 2, but was eliminated after the dessert round. By November 2022, she had become a mother, welcoming her daughter Lucy with her boyfriend. There's 